All right, so I have some updates for you guys. If you want to write them down, these are the updates you'd want to write down. So welcome everybody to our Texas call. As you can see, it is going to be a busy one. Um, here is our update. This year, 575 sales units closed for you guys. 575 sales units closed. Um, guys, that's 115 since the last time we talked, and it's only been a month. Um, 175 million sales volume closed, 175 million in volume closed, $56 million pending. And here's why that, that number is important, you guys. This is the highest volume we've ever had pending, like ever, ever. Um, we usually have about 40 million pending at all times. 56 million is like sky high through the roof. Um, so what it tells me is that we're super focused and we're really focused on growing our business. Um, and then our average price point, you guys, right now as a region is 330,000. And you guys are averaging 2.7% commission on each side. So that looks really good. Um, what I'd be thinking about with all of this information is any idea that you can take today and implement um, from today's call has the potential to generate a $330,000 sale for you. That's how I would be looking at it. And quick math on that is like 4,400 in your pocket. So that works for me. So let's jump in. Our panelists are going to keep it really tight in the three minute time frame and share their valuable content. And Alicia, you are up. You just went to Mega Camp. What were your takeaways? Okay, three minutes. Let's go. Um, really, it started with Keith Cunningham's keynote. Um, one statement, seven words. It's just been ringing in my head every day since. And he said, ordinary things consistently done produce extraordinary results. And, you know, guys, we hear it over and over. It's like, just do the work. You just got to be consistent. But for some reason this year, it just really stuck. And so it's not just consistency in your lead gen. I broke it down and it was consistently waking up at 630, which I'm still working on, consistently lead genning on the lead gen levers that I've chosen, not just deciding, okay, this morning, I think I'm gonna call, I think I'm gonna circle prospect, and, but being consistent in each of the lead gen levers, um, consistently following up, I'll talk more on that later, and then consistently nurturing our relationships beyond the transactions because we're expecting our referrals and yet are we consistently asking for them? Are we consistently following up with those clients um, to continue showing our value and keeping us top of mind for them, you know, a year, two years later? Um, that theme kind of really stuck through all of mega camp and maybe it was because it was on the forefront of my mind but anybody that was in the breakout sessions that were uh, the top agents interviews everything was about consistency um, there wasn't any over uh, overnight success stories it was a muscle and the hard work of their one thing consistency and here i am year one round two new city, right? And I'm expecting to feel the success and feel um, those extraordinary results. And I'm not. And I was like, why? Well, I wasn't consistently doing what I said. Um, the um, specific to the breakout sessions, I really leaned into the listings this year. Last year, it was lead gen because I was new. I needed to learn how to lead gen. And this year, you know, obviously listings are leveraged. So I really wanted to lean into that. And um, one of the sessions they talked about, you know, we're all in sellers markets right now, inventory low, inventory's low, buyers um, are out there. And we have a lot of sellers who want to take advantage of the sellers market. They want to take advantage of the low interest rates, but they can't find their next home. So what do you do? And these were my three great takeaways that um, I really took away. One, looking into bridge loans or homeward for our Central Texas folks that we are able to use. Of course, we have Keller offers, but we know that that's not the, probably the best option in the seller's market for them. But this is the one that really stuck out to me. Having the house ready to go 
staging done, photos done, and have it inactive in the MLS. So when that property does pop up on their radar, you hit go on the MLS and you send in your contingent offer and say, hey, look, we're live and we know it's going to sell within X amount of days because we've priced it right. And so that's something that I'm really going to hone in on during this, um, during this market. The other thing um, was what are the top, what top listing agents stand out from other agents? There were three things. Actually following up more than two times, duh, why, aren't, why am I not doing that? Um, I've actually noticed I've lost some expireds and for sale by owners this year because I didn't follow up past three or four follow-ups. Um, sometimes it takes a year, y'all. Knowing the disc personality when you're going in, know your disc. So when you sit down at the table, you can automatically, you know, realize, okay, this person's high D, keep it short. This high, person's high I, let's talk about their family a little bit more. Adapt your personality and your presentation to that. And of course, being, um, being authentic with your clients. Make it not about the transaction, but about, about the relationship with them. Did I keep it under three? Almost, almost. John Azar, where are you, bud? There you are. Welcome. Uh, My first is uh, is also from Keith Cunningham, who is the rich dad and rich dad poor dad. And he talked about one common theme with successful people is that they're not looking for a secret sauce or a magic pill to fuel their success. They're just waking up every day and making it happen. They're making their own luck with their own hard work. Um, the next idea or quote or aha is that super successful people play for mastery. They're playing an inner game instead of comparing the results or their process to other people. Um, they're really just trying to master and be the best they can at their job. Um, the next is I'm gonna rattle off a couple of the quotes that kept coming up throughout Mega Camp, and that's mind share leads to market share. Um, time blocking is incredibly important. If it's not on your calendar, it doesn't exist. This next one is kind of crazy, which I was shocked by it. 80% of people work with the first agent they come in contact with. That was something that all of us were shocked by. Um, and the last one for me is that you need to make the decision to be people's real estate professional instead of just selling to them. Make the decision to basically help them with anything and everything real estate instead of just that transactionary um, one-time thing. Um, yeah, Doesn't I love mean, that. I got away from it. I love that. Thanks, John. Yeah. Um, Andrew, good morning. Good morning. Alrighty, my major takeaway from Mega Camp is I'm going to continue on Alicia's. So ordinary tasks consistently done produce extraordinary results. Um, what I took out of that was, you know. The most ordinary thing that we do is, is waking up consistently at every day, taking the time in the mornings and knowing that mornings are for, for client acquisition. It's not to handle current clients that you have that are wondering where their survey is or wondering where their inspection report is. That stuff's for the afternoon. So setting expectations with clients ahead of time so that they know exactly when they can reach you and that you know, just because it might be nine to 12 and we're trying to acquire new clients, that, that their messages are still important and it doesn't mean that we're not working for them, but it means that in order for us to grow a scalable business, we have to set that time and set those expectations with those clients. Second one is knowing your numbers. If you don't know your numbers, you're not going to be able to, to grow and scale your business. If you have to know your conversion. You have to know how many contacts you have to, to, to make to hit those. And, and that's something I'm going through right now. Um, Alicia and I are a team. So, we've kind of divided out a little bit so we have a better understanding of what we need to do individually in order to meet our team goals. So really know your numbers so you know what you have to do each week so that you don't find yourself in those lows where you're just like, God, why can't I not do what I need to do? Know what your wins are each day so that you don't, you know, close your eyes at the end of the night and you're just wondering, you know, how you're going to play catch up. And then the third is, is master the scripts. When you master the scripts, you can sit down with people, have conversations and actually listen. You're not trying to guess ahead to what they're gonna say or anticipate what their next, next objection is gonna be. Master it so that when they say it, you, you know exactly how to respond and you're not 
sitting in limbo, just trying to guess where the conversation's going next. I love so. that. I love that. Awesome. So, so far, we've had Alicia and Andrew from San Antonio. We've had John Azar from Austin and uh, Beth, Beth from Austin, you're up. Hello. Uh, so yeah, a um, quick takeaway that I'm going to definitely start implementing uh, ASAP is um, you know, when sometimes we have like a different, a difficult seller or buyer and we have to deliver difficult news and we're like, gosh, I'm going to get this person on the phone. They're going to yell. They're going to be upset. She's going to cry. I don't know what I'm going to like. And for me, it weighs on me. You can ask Casey, my coach, like I will call him at midnight and I'll be like, Casey, she's, they're going to be mad at me. Um, and so what we learned at Mega Camp was if you have that really hard conversation with them on FaceTime, they are not, they're less likely going to explode, cry, they're going to understand. You're able to keep it more level headed because y'all are having a face to face conversation. So, um, you know, no one's going to yell at you face to face. You're not going to, you're going to have more confidence talking to them face to face rather than just on a cell phone call. Um, and then that way they can also pick up your tone and your inspection, like your inspection, your expressions a little bit more. Um, sometimes you send a text message and they're like, geez, that girl was really mean. And you're like, no, 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 you just read it wrong. Um, so that way there's no miss, um, miss and like no one, no one misunderstands what you're trying to say. Um, lastly, the other thing that I learned uh, that I always learn um, is about time blocking. And I always learn new little tricks and gadgets to um, really stick to my legion time. I think being newer in the industry, we become like a yes man very, very fast because we want to, we have clients and we need to service them. We need a paycheck. So we're just doing everything we have. And I mean, that's showing one buyer for two weeks and not legioning. And then you close that buyer and you don't have any any more business. Um, so just setting the scene up with those buyers and with those sellers right at the beginning and being like, hey, from nine to 11, I am finding new buyers for your home or I am finding new listings uh, for us to purchase. So I cannot be disturbed from that time. Uh, send me a text and I will definitely get back to it at 1130. Um, but just to let you know, Monday through Thursday, nine to 11, I'm, I'm searching for a new business for us. Um, so I think just like setting the scene up up front, they will never like the, I wish I remember who the top agent uh, was that said that, but she was like, yeah, from then on, I never got any calls. No, no one got like text during nine to 11. She was like, it, it made her life so much easier, less stressful. So um, just sticking to a time block will definitely relieve stress also. I love that. Awesome, Beth. Thanks. Hey, Michael. Michael from Midland. Excited to morning, hear you. Good morning. So um, I went to the West Texas Experience Mega Camp, and um, two ahas that stuck with me were from the Run It Like a Business and the Wealth Building uh, panels that we had. Um, the first one is uh, for like new agents, myself, especially coming with a business background. Um, James Kent, our MCA. Uh, for Keller Williams, he gave us like seven baby steps. Um, the first one is to always have like a thousand dollar emergency fund. Um, second one, pay off any and all um, of your debt except for your home. Um, three to six months of operating income. And the fourth one, invest 15% of your income. Um, the fifth one is for anyone that has kids or just want to build a uh, an extra reserve is save for college funds or just have a, a massive savings. Um, pay off your home early, as early as you can, save on interest. And then um, the seventh is live and give like no one else. Um, that one came from, from James with, uh, I believe he got that from the Ramsey Solutions. And then um, the second one was with the wealth building with with Laura um, and Tim, um, it's uh, always fell forward, and um, to to hold every single penny that you spend accountable. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah. You're awesome, 
Michael. Thank you for that perspective. That was great. Uh, Andrea, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Um, from Mega Camp, something that hit me was the key to getting rich and being successful is doing fewer dumb things. Um, a dumb thing that I realize I'm doing often is I am from a generation that didn't grow up using social media. So although I look at it all the time, I very, very rarely engage or post. Um, a common thread I kept hearing through Mega Camp was everybody's success with social media, whether it be a relationship, a transaction, a client, but there was success there. And it's something I don't do well. Um, so I have committed to, and I'm implementing an action item. I put 15 minutes on my calendar every day to learn something about social media and post at least once a day, something and try to, cause to me, it's just a foreign, I just something to scroll at when I'm bored and relieving stress. It's my stupid white time where I check out. Right. But there is a legion lever there and I realized what was dumb about it is I closed a buy sell there from Facebook this year. It was fear, but they came to me because of a Facebook post that I did. And I have a new client who's also fear, but again, Facebook, just cause I stuck something out there. So I'm going to take the time and make it a priority to add that to what I'm doing because I realized that I'm going to get lost. I'm going to be left behind because that's where the world is going if I don't stop being dumb about technology. So that is a goal that I'm taking away from Mega Camp or a uh, new strategy I'm gonna put in place. That's it. I love that. I specifically love that we all have dumb things. Yours is one thing. Everybody's got a dumb thing that they're, they're just like, don't wanna deal with it. And it could be the difference. I love that. Thanks, uh, Andrea. Andrea's from Austin. Memo, also from Austin. Uh, yeah, so my notes were pretty much on how do others go about their interactions with customers? Like, what are they saying or how are they saying it differently and perhaps more effectively than me? Um, so the thing that stood out to me the most is actually quite a simple concept in theory, and that is the most effective script is an authentic one. So how I interpret it, the perfect script is tailored made to the situation after you've uncovered motivation. So this requires some empathy to be effective. And this is something that I'm con constantly working at uh, in general. Um, AKA, you need to genuinely put yourself in the customer's shoes and the customer may not currently be emotionally equipped to make the best decision on their own. So our job is to present them with different scenarios like a choose your own adventure. So you can do X and it will lead to Y outcome or whatever options you're giving them, what works best for you. And then hold them to that goal so that they don't deviate, which they tend to do as, as you know. Well, you said you needed to get from point A to point B, and I'm showing you a couple of different ways here that you can achieve that goal, like homeward or killer offers or whatever other value proposition we can throw at it. Um, I think with all the scripting training that we do, we should be able to jump around the scripts as needed. Like, okay, so this is LP Mama with essentially a bit of FISBO script thrown in for this particular situation. And this will enable you to produce an authentic and ultimately effective script that will give you a better chance of conversion. That was awesome. Thank you. Uh, Laura from Midland. Are you there? There you are. Yes, I'm here. <laughs> there were a lot of a house, uh, but mine mostly came from the from Gary's economic um, address and just um, analyzing and comparing what we're going through right now versus what has happened in other recessions. Um, it was good to hear him say that we are bouncing back much quicker than we have in the past, but also that it is the worst contrast numbers wise from the last recession to this one in that we do need to prepare for a longer recovery which goes right in line with what michael was saying let's 
get our reserves up, let's get our expenses down. Sorry about that, a call was coming in. <laughs> let's get our reserves up, pay off our, as much as our, of our debt as we can. It has taken a long time for us to feel it in the real estate industry, the recession that's, that's coming or that may already be here, because we serve the right side of the scale that he was showing, which is the higher income and more steady job people. Uh, but that doesn't mean it's not going to catch up to us if something doesn't change soon. So preparing financially, I think, is one of the biggest messages that I heard from him is um, getting ready financially, um, protecting our lead gen time like never before so that there's still going to be business there. I loved when he talked about the fact that um, back in the 80s, people were, I don't know if it was the 80s, I don't remember the year, sorry. But it was 18% interest rates and people were still having selling homes. And so at two and a half, 2.75% interest, we can surely get some sales under our belt, even if we're in the longest recovery period that we've seen in the United States. So that was mine. I hope that's helpful. I love that. Right on. And we have been so lucky to help the people that still have jobs. There's a lot of people who don't have jobs. Therefore, the recovery will be slower. That's uh, I, right on, right on. We could have a whole power up on that. Um, Jonathan, want to wrap us up? This was your first mega camp. What were your takeaways? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so obviously I went into this from a view of a new agent, as I'm a new agent. So um, I walked away with like three main points, um, and they're all going to, it's going to sound pretty general, right? It's things that we talk about every day. Um, so the first one's time blocks, right? We talk about time blocks, morning blocks, you know, our 11 to 12 blocks, and then our afternoon blocks. Um, I think it's really easy as a new agent to just constantly worry about the number of contacts, right? Like I need more contacts, I need more contacts. But then it's the follow-up on the backside is what really matters, right? Because the first time I talk to somebody on the phone, they're not gonna go in and buy a house with me. It's gonna take that third, fourth, sometimes fifth, sometimes 10th contact um, of following up with them to actually move them forward, get them out on an appointment, right? And so then the second point is the systems that we have in place. So using the systems as a, as a follow-up, right? So I know, um, like Josh team, they, <clears throat> they talked a lot about command that Keller Williams agents use. Um, I think we're very blessed to be able to have um, brevity and just all the tools inside of it that it, that it enhances, um, especially like with like setting the tasks so that we know exactly when to follow up. You know, if it's a hot lead, we're following up, you know, a lot more than we are um, a two, a two year nurture. Um, so using the task, prioritizing the leads um, as a new agent, I, Casey and I actually recently have gone through and seeing like, looked at my Brevity account. I had a whole bunch of just new contacts. I've talked to a lot of those new contacts, but I didn't like take the time to prioritize them and actually put them into the buckets where they belong. So that when every day when I get into my Brevity account, I know exactly how to attack it, right? And what's my plan for the day in my, you know, my afternoon follow-up. Um, and then, you know, obviously just the market reports, the listing alerts, like we need to be, able, we need to use those tools to really bring people in to show our value. Um, and so that kind of brings me to my third point, like the value propositions um, that we have. Um, and especially as a new agent, like, you know, we see all these great events that other agents are throwing and they're inviting a whole bunch of people to a bar and grill or, you know, whatever it might be. Um, well, I, you know, new agents can't really afford to do that right now. So we need to figure out value propositions that are that Keller Williams and then specifically the Ben Kinney team has created, like, you know, the mortgage program, the homeward, the concierge service, like, use those like get get really good with those scripts get ha have a strong understanding of what those are so that you know when you get somebody like oh you know I, I need a lot of repairs on my house well hey you know what let's take a look at that let's figure out what we can do to get this house sold you want to take it you know trying to get them to take advantage of the current market so so yeah just in in review that that's my three things that i walked away with i know they're very general but time blocks systems and then implementing those value propositions to get people to move forward i love that Everything you guys said reminds me of what Ben says often, right? He says, let's get really good at who we are. Let's get really good at who we are. And it comes down to say the right thing, say it enough times, have enough people to say it to, right? 
Um, I'm really excited. You guys, like, hats off to all of you, like, staying in time uh, so that we can wrap up by nine. Uh, amazing. Next week is going to, the next time I see everybody and Jordan and Sarissa and, and Laura, we'll see everybody. It's going to be the 1st of October, which is expired day. It's also Halloween month. Um, so expires are a little bit scary for, for some people. Um, I'm going to put up a poll real quick right before we end. And everybody should see the poll. Do you see a poll? Nod your head if you do. Okay. I, so most of you guys have a poll because I see some responses. All right. I'm gonna give like 30 seconds max. So, okay, there's a ton of responses coming through. You guys are amazing. Okay. There we go. All right, I'm gonna give it 10 more seconds. So you got 10 seconds. And then I'm gonna post the results. I just wanna see what you guys feel about expired. All right. Three, two, one, done. All right, so we had 45 people. Can you guys see that? 45 people uh, voted, and it looks like 89% have not yet mastered expires the way they would like to, right? And 11% feel like they are rocking and rolling. If you are part of that 11%, please reach out to me because I think you would be awesome to teach the rest of us what you guys are doing uh, and what those conversations sound like. So next week, we are going to be scripting on expireds, and we're going to have a few people who feel very confident, and we want to see their approaches so you guys can jump in and do your expired calls right after. That's all, folks. Make a lot of money. Have a great day. We'll see you later. Bye, guys. Thanks. Bye. Good job, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.